to Phoenix again because when I start these characters, like I I had no idea how to do the hair. I really, to be honest, I had no idea how to do the hair. Like <laughs> because I've never done okay. this hairstyle before, so mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea. So I start asking, you know, asking people seen online. Uh, I I feel lucky because the the, the I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a company, an animation company now that has a lot of department. Uh, one of them are like they have like CSX, they do just hair and stuff. I have some friends there. I always go ask them, like ask them how to do that and how to do that. And it's good to have like to have to know people in other department. It's good to learn from other people. So like I always like ask stuff, ask people. This is how I learn. I ask, I really ask all the time. So for me, when I was doing when I was doing Phoenix, first of all, I said like. Since I had no idea, I'm gonna do it like, like the basic knowledge I had. I have uh, my Maya opened. This is the mm -hmm. this is the this is the scene I have with uh, Phoenix. So first of all, I did the I did the breads in in Z brush. I did okay. them like simple, like cylinders in Z brush. Oh, oh wait, by the way, before I forgot, in order to like to. To navigate between ZBrush and Maya or Max, like this, I found it like a cool script called Stix. It's a really cool script to navigate between softwares. Like before, mm -hmm. people used to use Go Z, but for mm -hmm. some reason, in ZBrush 4 or I think Go Z stopped working. I don't know. I don't know like exactly what happened. But Stix, like it's a lifesaver. Like for example, I can just select my tool, export. Go to ZBrush, like import, and that's it. It's a real time thing. It's like really, really a cool software. So I did like I did as I said I did the hair using just mm -hmm. like a simple cylinders in ZBrush, like a really simple cylinder. New mesh, and I start moving. Like I did UVs for the cylinder because I don't want to like. Finish all my stuff and then and then like do UV to all all of them in the same time. I just did, I did one and after mm -hmm. I did one and I did UV in it first because I need UVs in case I need to like uh, texture something or I need to color something. So that's it. That was like this is how I approach the braid at first. Like I did one cylinder UV it UV it and then export export it to Maya. So when okay. I when I when I did go back to Maya, I had my my hair. So I went to XGen, and then mm -hmm. I want to create description file, mm -hmm. like description. This is create description, and then I created the description. I uh, in the main hair. I kept like I used. Placing the shape guides because I want to place my own guides. I don't want to like, uh, I, I like I'm wrong them attribute control expression. Mm -hmm. So I created the the expression, and then I placed my guides like across all all the hairs. Like I really placed my guides manually, just track manually in. Let's say in a random way, manually in a random way. I'm gonna just do this area so it's because it's the same all across. Okay, I guess no. Uh, okay, it's when you place your guides. When you click on your hair, go review mm -hmm. output and, and check only primitives so you can see all the hairs you have. Okay, something. Oh, I forgot because I'm hiding everything like glitch and hide because mm -hmm. I was like I was I was hiding everything. This is why you can see the hair before. So now I'm gonna select just my description and my video. In my and then hide them. 
this is and this is my hairs now so after okay. that i i i went to like first 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 i have this this review output i have this percentage if if, the, if you in check only primitives in view you will have 100 percent percentage of hair what that mean that mean like if you put like in the density if you put like let's say five you will have 100 percent of that density shown in the viewport and sometimes it, if you have like a good machine it's okay to work with 100 percent preview but like for me I always like keep it like fifty percent or twenty percent. Just, just see it like to see what I'm working, what I'm doing. I don't want to see all the hair. I want to see some of the hairs, but the render I want to see all. So I, I, I always check only primitive in view and like I put like a percentage in the view. Unless, unless if it's like for example if it's eyebrows. I always put 100% because I want to see all my eyebrows because you know eyebrows technically they like a human human head has like 500 eyebrows like in both eyebrows for example like each 250 each uh, 50 each so it's okay to see 500 eyebrow hair in the in the viewport it's not big of a deal and uh, but hair hair that's a lot like average human hair has like 100,000 hairs so seeing 100,000 before that's that's gonna slow your, your your navigation and stuff unless of course unless if you have I don't know, a beast machine who knows you can handle it it's okay if you have like a good five graphic cars anyway <clears throat> so I did the hair and then like the for the length I always I don't like I don't, I don't like to have uh, because uh, I'm gonna see the, the tip of the hair. I don't want to see the. I don't want all my hair to have the same length. So for the length, I want to the. I want to the. To the tip. I want to the. To the expression. If you're not familiar with XGen, XGen works with uh, expressions. Like you can your own expressions, or you can just like go in the this uh, small arrow load expression library and there is a lot of expressions like like color expression geometry expression like a lot or you can go to xgen and there is like cat like a procedural expression noise a lot of stuff this is if you don't know how like the correct expression to write you can uh, access from there but if you know, like uh, Xgen help in the, in the internet, there's a lot of people that did the expression before. There's a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of good grooming artists out there that can teach you expressions if you want to learn more about them. But I'm not like I'm not like a super good person of knowing all expressions. So I always like I always look online. Of about if I want to do something or check the small uh, triangle there for me like to randomize the length like random expression is like the easiest one so you just type run and then you can type the, the thing you want like for example like the if you keep it like random like this it's gonna be it's gonna be random all across but you need a value for me, my the value that I worked with what was like 0 0.4 and 0 0.02. This is like apply. So you see now I have I have uh, my now my hair is too small. But if I change it, like you can see the you can see in real time like. I'm gonna exaggerate so you have like a better idea. Thank you. Apply. You see now you can see that all my hair doesn't have the, the same because it you know it's human hair. Even if you cut your hair like 
with when hair grows it's not gonna grow the same length because each hair has its own speed of growth so, and also it's it's good it looks natural when you do that so i put like a random expression for the width like uh, uh, for just you know, to be clear the random like the, the parameters inside the exchange work accordingly to your like to your scene scale if you have a real time if you have like a real life scale size like those that are like 0 0.01 it's it's the, it's the correct size the, but sometimes if you have like a big objects in your scene 0 0.01 will be like too small if you have like a small object 0 0.01 will be like too big so you always like you always try to keep your your scale uh, in a human level human level or if you play with those parameters and for me like i randomize the, the length it's it's a good thing to randomize the length if you can see the tip of the hair randomize the length if you're not gonna see the tip of the hair you don't have to like play with the length also the width the width if you, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes if you like having a super close up it's good to randomize the width of the hairs because you know we don't have the same with hair so if you're not gonna see like a super close up it doesn't matter because no one will notice that your hair is not super doesn't have the same length sorry and also and with the width ramp always like the tip Make it down, and then this this trick. One of the CFX artists, my in the company I work with, it, it she showed me this. She's really cool, cool hair artist. She showed me this trick, like to put always the the, the, the tip like down, and like put it up and then down from the other side, just to give the hair uh, like this cylindrical horny shape. It's like cylindrical horn shape. So, and that's it. Just I did this, and I I I applied some some modifiers. Like first modifier, it's it's always. Not always. I mean, like first modifier was a clump. I applied the clump modifier, to make mm -hmm. the hair like, like, touch each other, clumping. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I, the, I modified the CV count. The CV count, it's. The, each hair has its own, let's say, its own vertices. So the less vertices, the hair will look uh, will look so low poly. So you always make your CV count like bigger if you want like a smooth hair. I'm gonna show you an example when I apply like for example the noise modifier. Because when you apply okay. a noise modifier, if you have like a, if you have like a. If you don't have, you see the hair looks, when you apply not noise modifier, we can use like this. Let's look at this. The CV count is five, and the hair has this shape. If I had the CV count, you see, the now the hair is too smooth and has more detail. Yeah. So, and, so, I applied like a noise modifier. Yeah, and also I applied the curl modifier. A curl modifier is like make coil. Yeah, it's like, sorry. Yeah, sorry for my <laughs> English is not my primary language. So if if you guys didn't understand the word or something, it might be bad. <laughs> okay. So a coil modifier, it's, uh, it's, what make your hair curly the right word curly and and all because i wanted my my hair to to look messy curly because it's uh fred it's the hairs are, are like kind of messy between them and also important thing i forgot to say it's the reference like always always when you start like when you start working always look for reference online uh, don't start work from your imagination because 
unless if you have like a graph memory, I don't remember how to say it. Anyway, all, even those people, they were always the first one. For me, I, I did like, I typed like dreadlocks online and I was looking for a lot of reference, like seeing you know, how dreadlocks are, how hair, the colors, the way he is. So and this is what, when I applied coil modifier, I, I give it like, I went to, I went down because coil has like this uh, the count scale. I did made the count scale down. I made like coil is like how many rounds your, your hair has. And then you, you can see it's the hair start to look messy now. It's okay because we can add more modifier and fix it. And the radius, the radius, the radius scale is like circle of the hair. Because if if, if we see it like the the, hair, the coil, it's like it takes each hair and make it twist, make it like looks cylindrical. So and I made the 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 radius too small because I wanted my hair to stick to my uh, dreadlocks geo because I had to be like go far away you see the hair is like polygonal i need to add you see when you add the coil we had this problem so uh, to fix this problem just to go to tv count and like make it up so now we have like a smooth circle so uh, as i say i applied the coil a clump a mm. coil and then i added the noise for noise i added like a frequency of three you see now, now the the hair start to look messy. I made I make it I make the tips also messy because the, the I mean the roots sorry because the 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 noise when you apply the noise you have this magnitude scale. The magnitude scale works from the tip from the root to the tip, the root to the tip. So if you want to make your roots messy, like raise this point. If you want to make your tip messy, raise this point. If you want to, like, for example, only the root is messy and the tip is, is not having noise, just like make this one down. So, this is the logic of like the magnet, this is the logic of the curve. The curves all from root to tip, root to tip. So, I applied like a frequency of three and then, like, I added another noise because now I have like a general noise you see when i applied the noise i didn't i didn't plug any 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 map in the mass or magnitude or anything it was like a general noise this is a general noise you can you can like you need anyway <laughs> anyway so first noise is a general noise the second i'm gonna add another noise and this will be like will be will have a mask because I don't want the same noise all over my hair. So my second noise, we have a, I went to like, to the mask and then apply the script. It's, it's, a, it's a smooth step scripts. Usually I have like the scripts I use all the time. I have a document with all the scripts I use all the time in hair. So for me, I don't look for them all the time. So I'm gonna show you where to access to this smooth step scripts, this triangle, load, mm -hmm. expression, samples, xgen, and go all the way down to xgen water. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, oh, xgen, this one, and then noise. In here you can see all the noise scripts. For me, the one I use the most is this smooth steps noise. And now to apply in the script you can see this 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 is like the, the 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 white area is the area that will noise will be applied the black area is the area where noise will not be applied so in order to like to change it you just you have to play with this with all with those and like you, you need to play with this manually or you can type it here so for me the the thing I did is this and then accept and then you will have like now the noise is not applied to all my hairs as you can see some of the hairs doesn't move some of the hairs move 
I'm like turning it on and off so you can see that some of the hairs move, some of the hairs doesn't move because, because I wanted my next noise to, to not be general. I want it to be like randomized. So, and like have a, just to give your hair like more life, you need to randomize stuff because because if you if you like uh, if you apply uh, your uh, your uh, modifier to all your hairs, it's gonna look like uh, it's not gonna look organic. It's gonna look mechanical, like like mm -hmm. tileable or something. Okay. You need to give it like a a natural look. So this is my second noise. It was like it was so now as you can see. I remember when I said uh, when I said the length, randomize the length. Now you see when it, because when I add the coil modifier, the length changes because the coil add add like stretches each hair. So for now, I, I didn't like I didn't like the hair to be like as I said from the beginning. I didn't like the hair to be like far from my geometry. So I went back to my to my length, and then I I put like smaller parameters. For me, 0 0.4 and 0 0.01 was correct scale for for my scene, for my characters. So and after that, I applied another coil modifier, but this time with with a with a randomized in a randomized way. Because I wanted my some of the hairs missing. So. I use I use the same smooth effect in the mask, and now you can see some of the hairs are like like give it. We just press the express uh, expre sorry expression of fly away, <laughs> the feeling of being fly away. So and after that, after that I did add like a cut. So a cut modifier, a cut modifier. It, Cuts your hairs. It works the same way as like a length randomizer, but the cut you have more control. Like when you have randomized length, you only have like a I don't know. You have a length randomizer, but the cut can even go like deeper and like cut each hair. To you can use the cut modifier only if you have a. The tip of the hair shown. If you don't see the tip of the hair, you don't have to to use the cut modifier, because it doesn't make sense to use a cut modifier when you don't see the length hair, the the tip of the hair. I mean, because even if we have like a length, like a length randomizer, we have some hairs like big because we add like a coil modifier. So in order to fix that, I add a cut modifier in a random way. When you apply a cut modifier, it always gives you like a random expression, default random expression. So I added a cut modifier and I added another noise, but this noise, it's a flyaway noise. So, so in order to do like a flyaway noise, uh, there's, uh, there's, I don't remember the, guy, the name, the guy's name. But he's one of uh, ex gen developers in Disney. He he did like a script online about uh, flyways. Yeah, I copied his script and I saved it one time. I'm gonna show you the script. You can copy it from the video if you want. First of all, I applied the mask to randomize the flyways. Second, I went to magnitude and then I applied. Run the the flyaway script, like it's it's this one. You can pause the video and type it. Or um, if if I remember the the guy's name, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna send it to you. Whatever. It's this one. This is this is really really a cool a cool script to do flyaways. Like I used I use this script all the time. Like Dumpo in in. In, in in the in this in this in this work, you, see, you can see this lady, the lady the the, the female head, uh, the female portrait. I did all those 
flyaways, small hairs were, were, were done by that script. It's really cool. It's really a cool script to do flyaway. So, come back to more. So this is this is how we approached. This is like this this is like no magical no magical trick. As I told you, I had no idea before. I just like was experimenting with all of those until I found like the the correct potion for this this specific hair. Uh, 